Here's where the explanation becomes a little more complicated. The casting process for the 1976 TV series Three's Company was a careful selection of talents to bring to life the comedic story of three roommates. John Ritter, who played Jack Tripper, was chosen through a series of auditions. His comedic timing and physical comedy skills stood out, making him the perfect fit for the role. Suzanne Summers, who played Chrissy Snow, was not the original choice for the role. But after the initial actress left the show, Summers was brought in. Her girl next door charm and comedic abilities won over the producers. Auditions for the role of Janet Wood led to Joyce DeWitt's casting. Her dramatic training provided a grounding influence for the more outrageous characters, and her chemistry with Ritter and Summers was undeniable. The casting of Jack's female roommates was not just about individual talent, but also about their chemistry as a trio. This was tested through read-throughs and table meetings before the final decisions were made. The casting of the supporting characters, like Mr. and Mistress Roper, also went through a thorough process. Norman Fell and Audra Lindley, who played the Ropers, were chosen for their ability to provide a contrast to the younger characters, adding depth to the series' comedic landscape. In summary, the casting of Three's Company was a careful process of selecting talents that not only had individual prowess, but also meshed well together, creating a dynamic ensemble that brought laughter into American homes for several years. I love Reggie Jackson. Yes, I do. <laughs> The directorial vision behind the 1976 TV series Three's Company was shaped by John Rich, who brought his unique style and creative influences to the show. Rich, with his background in directing and producing, created a sitcom that was both entertaining and relatable. Rich's approach to directing Three's Company was characterized by his ability to balance humor and drama. He drew inspiration from his experience in directing various genres, including comedy, drama, and musicals. Rich's creative influences were evident in the show's pacing, camera angles, and editing, which gave Three's Company its distinct style. John Rich's collaboration with the cast and crew was also crucial to the success of Three's Company. He worked closely with the writers to ensure that the storylines were engaging and that the characters were well developed. Rich also fostered a positive working environment, encouraging the cast to improvise and add their personal touches to their performances. Rich's collaborative style extended to the show's production design, cinematography, and music. He worked closely with the production team to create sets that were both functional and visually appealing. Rich's attention to detail was evident in the show's lighting and camera work, which added depth and texture to each scene. The music in Three's Company was also carefully selected, with Rich choosing songs that complemented the show's tone and enhanced its emotional impact. In summary, John Rich's directorial vision for Three's Company was marked by his ability to balance humor and drama, his creative influences, and his collaborative style. Rich's approach to directing the show was characterized by his attention to detail, his experience in directing various genres, and his commitment to fostering a positive working environment. Through his vision and leadership, Three's Company became a beloved sitcom that continues to entertain audiences today. Three's Company, a popular TV series that first aired in 1976, follows the lives of three roommates Jack, Janet, and Chrissy living together in Santa Monica, California. The show is filled with humor, drama, and unexpected twists that keep viewers engaged. Throughout the series, there are many funny, shocking, and even sad moments that have left a lasting impact on audiences. From Jack's outrageous schemes to Chrissy's naivety, each character brings something unique to the table. One of our favorite moments is when Jack pretends to be a famous painter to impress a date, only to have his cover blown by a real artist. It's a hilarious scene that showcases the comedic timing of the cast. We're sure you have your own favorite moments and memories related to Three's Company. We would love to hear about them in the comments below. What was your favorite character or scene from the show? Did any particular moment leave a lasting impact on you? Take a trip down memory lane and share your stories with us. We can't wait to hear about your experiences. <laughs> the TV series Three's Company, popular in the late 1970s, was filmed primarily in Hollywood, California. The set design was crucial to creating the apartment sharing arrangement central to the show's plot. 
The interior of the apartment was meticulously designed to accommodate the three main characters with a shared living space, separate bedrooms, and a single bathroom. The production team faced logistical challenges in filming, such as managing the limited space of the set and ensuring smooth transitions between scenes. To address these, they employed innovative techniques like using sliding doors and hidden compartments to maximize space and facilitate quick set changes. The show's exterior scenes were filmed at a courtyard apartment complex located on 88 and 55 Crescent View Drive in West Hollywood. However, the interiors, including the apartment and the Regal Beagle Pub, were all sets built on the studio lot. Despite the technical constraints, Three's company became known for its vibrant and humorous portrayal of shared living. The production team's clever use of space and innovative techniques contributed significantly to the show's success making it a memorable part of 1970s television. Every time I think about it, I get romantic. <laughs> this is not the right place. Three's Company is a classic sitcom that first aired in 1976. The show revolves around a man named Jack Tripper, played by John Ritter, who lives with two women, Janet, portrayed by Joyce Dewitt, and Chrissy, played by Suzanne Somers. Despite the provocative premise of a man living with two women, the trio are platonic roommates and not romantic partners. The series explores the trials they face, and through it all, they remain a close-knit group akin to a family. John Ritter's portrayal of Jack Tripper is a key highlight of the show. His physical comedy and mugging are central to the humor, earning him recognition as a comic genius. Joyce Dewitt's character, Janet, is a girl next door type, while Susan Summers plays the role of the naive blonde, Chrissy. The show's comedic style is primarily farce, making it a light-hearted and entertaining watch. However, the show has its drawbacks, particularly in the portrayal of the trio's landlords, the Rokers. The wife is depicted as a nagging complainer, while the husband is shown as someone who endures her complaints but occasionally lashes out in a creepy manner. This portrayal is more sad than funny and is a weak point in an otherwise enjoyable series. Despite numerous cast changes, Three's Company remained a reliable source of humor and fun. The show's heartwarming center and the camaraderie between the three roommates make it a beloved classic that continues to entertain audiences today. Get the beaver to come over here. <laughs> Why is he coming over here? The creation of the musical score and soundtrack for the 1976 TV series Three's Company was a significant aspect of the show's success. The music, composed by Joe Raposo and Jimmy Haskell, among others, played a crucial role in complementing the narrative and emotional tone of the series. Joe Raposo, best known for his work on Sesame Street, brought a light-hearted and playful tone to the music of Three's Company. His compositions, such as the theme song, were upbeat and catchy, setting the stage for the comedic antics of the characters. Jimmy Haskell, on the other hand, focused on the emotional tone of the series. He composed the background music, which subtly underscored the characters' feelings and enhanced the comedic timing of the show. Haskell's music was designed to be unobtrusive, yet effective in heightening the emotional impact of the scenes. The musicians involved in the creation of the soundtrack also played a crucial role. The use of live instruments, such as the piano, saxophone, and drums, added a warm and human touch to the music. The musicians worked closely with the composers to ensure that the music perfectly matched the tone and pace of each scene. The music of Three's Company was carefully crafted to complement the narrative and emotional tone of the series. The composers and musicians worked together to create a soundtrack that was both memorable and effective in enhancing the viewer's experience. The result was a soundtrack that has stood the test of time and remains a beloved part of the series' enduring legacy. Now go get him! Because the next time I see Jack, I want to see Jack, not Jack. Jenny Harrison, who played Cindy Snow on Three's Company, had an interesting career trajectory before joining the show. She was a Kellogg's Corn Flakes box model and even held the title of Miss Young America. John Ritter, on the other hand, holds the distinction of being the only cast member to appear in every episode of the series. His dedication to the show was unwavering. Finally, the character of Mr. Furley, played by Don Knotts, had mannerisms inspired by Barney Fife. This was a nod to Knotts' earlier role in The Andy Griffith Show, where he played the bumbling but lovable Barney Fife. All these people. Oh, well, this is Jack Tripper, and this is Janet Wood, and this young lady. 
One of the most iconic scenes in the 1976 TV series Three's Company is the Jack tries to cook dinner scene from the first episode. The direction, performance, and cinematography come together seamlessly to create a memorable moment. John Rich, the director, uses a combination of close-ups and wide shots to capture Jack's clumsy attempts at cooking. The audience can see the chaos unfold in detail, making it funnier. The performance of John Ritter, who plays Jack, is key to the scene's success. His physical comedy and facial expressions are priceless, making Jack's character endearing and relatable. The cinematography is also noteworthy. The use of warm colors and natural lighting in the kitchen set creates a cozy and inviting atmosphere contrasting with the disaster that's happening. The camera angles and movements add to the comedic timing, such as when it quickly cuts to a close-up of the smoke detector as it goes off. This scene had a significant impact on the audience, setting the tone for the rest of the series. It established Jack as a lovable, clumsy character and the show as a light-hearted, entertaining sitcom. The scene is still remembered and celebrated today, a testament to its enduring appeal. Suzanne Summers, who played Chrissy, commented on the scene, John's physical comedy was just brilliant. He made that scene unforgettable. Richard Klein, who played Larry, added, that scene was a perfect example of why the show worked. It was funny, relatable, and the characters were well-defined. In conclusion, the Jack tries to cook dinner scene from Three's Company is a masterclass in comedy showcasing the talents of the cast and crew. Its impact on the audience and the series as a whole is undeniable, making it one of the most iconic scenes in TV history. Yes, Jack? In the sitcom Three's Company, Larry's apartment is only ever shown to include a part of the living room and front door with no other areas visible. Actress Jenny Harrison portrayed Liz Crawford in the made-for-television film Behind the Camera, the unauthorized story of Three's Company in 23. The opening and closing credits of the show's first few seasons were filmed in Venice Beach as a last-minute decision. The initial shot, which zooms in on Jack Tripper riding his bike, was captured from the roof of a shop owner's building who accepted 100 for its use. I was the travel agent. I just canceled the honeymoon trip. Oh. Come on, it's okay. I'll wait. Three's Company, a 1976 TV series, made a significant cultural and social impact through its groundbreaking representation of unmarried, cohabitating men and women. The show resonated with audiences by presenting a relatable and humorous portrayal of roommate life, which was becoming increasingly common during that time. The series contributed to pop culture by popularizing the buddy comedy genre and introducing the character of Jack Tripper a charming and funny male lead who challenged traditional gender norms. This representation influenced later sitcoms and TV shows, which began to explore more diverse and progressive storylines. Three's Company also sparked discussions on relevant social themes, such as gender roles, sexuality, and the changing nature of relationships in American society. The show's willingness to tackle these topics head-on made it a trailblazer in television and helped to shift cultural attitudes towards cohabitation and gender equality. Overall, Three's Company left a lasting impact on popular culture and society by challenging traditional norms and presenting a more progressive and inclusive vision of American life. Four people. <laughs> After the show's success, Suzanne Summers revealed that Joyce Dewitt had expressed dissatisfaction over special cameras being set up for her, and John Ritter, but not for her. In contrast, Priscilla Barnes maintained a close friendship with Joyce Dewitt even after the show's end. The characters of Chrissy and Mr. Furley are recognized for their distinct snorting sound, which became a trademark for both of them. Despite any behind-the-scenes tensions, the show's enduring popularity is a testament to the talented cast and their memorable performances. Jack, does Roper know? Janet, don't be silly. Of course Mr. Roper knows his own well. Three's Company, a 1976 TV series, received mixed reviews from critics, but was a hit with audiences. The show, which starred John Ritter, Suzanne Summers, and Joyce DeWitt as roommates, was praised for its humor and physical comedy, with the New York Times calling it a cheerful, unabashed situation comedy. However, some critics criticized the show's sexual innuendo and perceived sexism. Despite the mixed reviews, Three's Company was a rating success and ran for eight seasons. 
It was nominated for several awards, including two Golden Globe Awards for Best Television Series Musical or Comedy, and two Primetime Emmy Awards for Outstanding Comedy Series. John Ritter was also nominated for several awards for his performance, including a Golden Globe Award for Best Actor in a Television Series Musical or Comedy, and a Primetime Emmy Award for Outstanding Lead Actor in a Comedy Series. The nomination and awards received by Three's Company and its cast are a testament to the show's popularity and influence. These accolades helped to establish the careers of the show's stars and solidified Three's Company's place in television history. The show's success also led to several spin-offs and a stage adaptation. The awards and nominations the show received are a reflection of its impact on popular culture and its enduring legacy. Rich guy's sister? <laughs> In the popular 1976 TV series, Three's Company, John Ritter portrayed a character who pretended to be gay. While in the 2005 film Dangerous Perceptions, his son, Jason Ritter, took on the role of a gay man pretending to be straight. Coincidentally, Audra Lindley, who also starred in Three's Company, passed away on Suzanne Summer's 51st birthday. In addition, Susan Plachette was initially considered for the role of Lana Shields, but it ultimately went to Anne Wedgworth. The show's impact reached far and wide, connecting the cast in unexpected ways even after its run ended. Get back down there, you're dead, remember? <laughs> the making of the popular 1976 TV series, Three's Company, was filled with interesting anecdotes. John Ritter, who played Jack Tripper, was known for his pranks on set. He often surprised his co-stars, Suzanne Somers and Joyce DeWitt, with unexpected antics keeping the atmosphere light and fun. The show's theme song, Come and Knock on Our Door, was initially intended to be an instrumental piece. However, songwriter Joe Raposo suggested adding lyrics and the catchy tune we know today was born. The set of the trio's apartment was designed to look like a Santa Monica beachfront unit, but it was actually built on a soundstage in Hollywood. The crew took great care to create a realistic and homey atmosphere, even adding real plants and functional appliances. Suzanne Summers, who played Chrissy Snow, was initially hired for her comedic skills, but gained fame for her physical comedy. She often incorporated her background in dance and gymnastics into her performance, leading to many memorable moments. Despite the show's lighthearted tone, it tackled serious issues such as gender roles, sexuality, and financial struggles. The writers and cast worked together to ensure these topics were handled with sensitivity and humor. The chemistry between the cast members was a crucial factor in the show's success. They spent a lot of time together offset, forming close friendships that translated onto the screen. This camaraderie contributed to the show's warm and inviting atmosphere. In conclusion, the making of Three's Company was filled with laughter, camaraderie, and creativity. The cast and crew's dedication to their craft and to each other resulted in a beloved TV series that continues to entertain audiences today. Jack? Listen, uh, I've got to talk to you and Cindy right now. Oh, I'm sorry, it'll have to be Cindy. The TV show Three's Company from the 1970s had a tumultuous production period, as revealed by the show's main cast members in various interviews. Joyce Dewitt and Susan Summers, who had a falling out after Summers' firing, reunited years later and criticized the show's producers, including Mickey Ross, for their sexist attitudes. Both actors claimed that the producers failed to appreciate the female cast contributions, with Summers going so far as to call them pigs. Dewitt, Barnes, and Summers all described their time on the show as a negative experience, with Barnes even labeling it as one of the worst of her life. John Ritter and Joyce DeWitt were the only main cast members who remained on the show for its entire run. DeWitt had a disagreement with the network during the show's third season, resulting in her sitting out an episode. She staged a sick out after ABC tried to take back a promised raise, and despite reinstating her raise, the network and production team had already moved forward with a reworked script, leaving no room for DeWitt's return. It's awfully nice of you to meet me here at a moment's notice. Three's Company, a 1976 TV series, holds a significant place in film history due to its groundbreaking and risque storylines that revolve around roommates Jack, Janet, and Chrissy. The show's humor, centering on misunderstandings and innuendos, was a departure from traditional sitcoms and paved the way for future television comedy. 
Three's company is known for introducing the concept of a will-they or won't-they dynamic between its characters, which has since been replicated in numerous TV shows and movies. The series also popularized the buddy comedy genre, focusing on the camaraderie and interplay between its main characters. The show's impact on future filmmaking can be seen in various aspects, such as its innovative use of humor, its daring storylines, and its diverse cast. Three's Company was one of the first American television shows to feature a male character disguising his sexuality, which was a bold move at the time and has since been explored in numerous films and TV shows. Subsequent works inspired by Three's Company include shows like The Golden Girls, Friends, and The Big Bang Theory, all of which feature a group of friends living together and navigating their personal and professional lives. The show's influence can also be seen in movies like American Pie and Superbad, which feature similar humor and themes of friendship and coming of age. In conclusion, Three's Company has left a lasting legacy and influence on film history, impacting future filmmaking and inspiring numerous subsequent works. Its innovative storytelling and humor continue to resonate with audiences today. Well, I'm not happy about it. Aha! Uh -huh. I really miss her. Aha! Uh -huh. But we should not interfere. Aha! Uh -huh. Hold it, strike that last aha. Uh -huh. John Ritter, known for his role in Three's Company, had a particular fondness for the episode Up in the Air from 1982, where his long comic dance earned him an Emmy Award nomination. On the other hand, he wasn't too keen on Chrissy and the Guru from 1978, which featured him imitating a walrus. In the Night of the Ropers episode, both Norman Fell and Audra Lindley made appearances, marking the only time all three, including Don Knotts, appeared together on the show. The role of the blonde roommate, initially named Samantha, was first given to Suzanne Zinner. However, she was replaced by Susan Lanier, who was then terminated after a few weeks of rehearsal. Denise Gallick was cast as the second Chrissy, but became unavailable shortly before taping. Producers then discovered Suzanne Summers through Johnny Carson's show and hired her as the third and final Chrissy. Now, yeah, we'll just excuse ourselves. Yeah, bye-bye. <laughs> the original pilot of Three's Company was penned by Larry Jobart and directed by Burt Brinkerhoff. Actress Denise Gallic fury was initially cast as Chrissy, but Joyce DeWitt took over the role when Gallic fury became unavailable. Susan Lanier also stood in as Chrissy for the second pilot. The trio's apartment was owned by Mr. Furley's older brother, Bart, who was intimidating and gruff towards his younger brother, even in adulthood. In one episode, Jordan Charney played both Jack's boss and Larry's boss, showcasing the actor's range and versatility. Think he's coming down with something. <laughs> in the third season of Three's Company, the character owner, played by Marion Black, joined Janet and Chrissy as a roommate before Jack moved in. However, she only appeared in one episode, Eleanor's Return. The show's plot often revolved around misunderstandings or lies. Sadly, the cast members' lives were marked by loss. Audra Lindley, who played Helen Riley, was the first to pass away in 1997, followed by her on-screen husband Norman Fell, who played Stanley Riley 14 months later. Don Knotts, who played Ralph Furley, died a little over seven years later. John Ritter, who played Jack Tripper, had the shortest lifespan, passing away just six days shy of turning 55 years old. Despite the sadness that marked the cast's later years, their impact on the show and its audience remained significant. Born in 1918, Audra Lindley was the oldest cast member, followed by Norman Fell, who was five years younger than her. Don Knotts was just four months younger than Norman Fell, while John Ritter was the youngest, Three's company's enduring popularity can be attributed to its engaging plot lines and talented cast, who brought the show's characters to life in a way that resonated with audiences. The show's legacy continues to captivate new viewers, even today. Hi, Janet. Hi. Did you have a good time babysitting? Oh, yeah, Jack. I really love babies. And that little... T if the 1976 TV series Three's Company brought laughter to your living room, we'd love to hear your stories, share your favorite memories, and the impact this classic show had on you. Did it inspire you, influence your perspective on television, or become a part of your family's traditions? By engaging with us, you'll not only share a trip down memory lane, but also help create a vibrant community of classic TV enthusiasts. Like, share, and subscribe to join the conversation and discover more cinematic explorations.
Let's celebrate the shows that have made a difference in our lives. Here last night, insulting women, spoiling people's evenings out, knocking drinks over. Oh, I'm really sorry. <laughs>